Hey, this is Barry from Grace Point, and before we get to the message, we want to tell you about something brand new that we are starting. We are answering people's questions about life, marriage, family, the Bible, God, uh, current events, and we're going to videotape them and put them on our new YouTube channel. So if you'd like to subscribe and watch and listen and learn, go to YouTube, type in Grace Point Kitsap, and then push subscribe. Right now, we want you to join this message, and we pray that it will encourage you and inspire you and help you in any aspect, wherever you are on this journey of faith. Good morning, Grace Point. Glad that you all are here with us today. Maybe you're brand new, you just came in today, and maybe you came in for the first time, went, do they have trucks out there every Sunday? (laughs) Yes, we know we do. We don't do that. But maybe you you came, your friend invited you, your neighbor invited you, we're glad that you are here. We are currently in the middle of a six-week series called Unleash. Uh, For those of us who are followers of God, we are to unashamedly Give worship to a worthy God. And maybe your understanding of worship is like, what is that? And why do you do what you do? Why do you, I mean, who sings in our culture besides the seventh inning stretch, you know, or, or the national anthem? No one really sings. Well, why do we sing as part of worship? Well, we're teaching us what God says about that. And uh, the first two weeks, we laid this foundation of worship of what it is. It's responding to the glory and grace of God, who he is, what he's done, and his name. We respond. That's what worship is. And all of us, all of us, no matter where you are in the faith continuum, whether you have no faith or you've had a faith for many, many years, all of us worship something. We respond to what we love. And to worship God is we're responding to who he is, what he's done, and his name. So we're talking about what it is and why it's important. And we talked about how we are to commanded as followers to continually offer, continually offer uh, sacrifices of praise. And the biggest sacrifice that I face, the biggest sacrifice that most of us face as followers of, of God is ourselves. We trip over ourselves. Our beliefs, our opinions, our preferences, our heritage, our upbringing. And we're talking about we need to be unleashed within the guardrails of Scripture, remove some man-made guardrails to really worship God. And so after the first two weeks, now we're in the second of four weeks of how to worship. I'm I'm thankful that that God tells us over 250 times to, to praise the Lord. That's a command. But then he doesn't say, well, praise God, praise the Lord. He tells us how to, how to, and we're looking at seven Hebrew words and unpacking the meaning and the wording and the picture illustrations of what it means to worship God, what it looks like, what it looks like. So last week we had two words of talking about the enthusiasm of praise. We talked about yada, to, to lift our hands. It's like the picture is like throwing a stone. It's like, yes, God, who you are, what you've done. Yada. And then we talked about halal. That's where we get the word hallelujah. Halal. That means to, to boast, to cheer, to celebrate, to be on the verge of foolishness. That is celebrating with enthusiasm, worship with enthusiasm, who God is, what he's done in our lives. And I know, I know, I, I saw it and felt it last week that uh, some of you were uncomfortable. This whole series, some of you were like, yes. Some of you thanked me for giving you permission to worship. I'm like, don't thank me. I didn't write it. God has given us permission to how we worship. Um, But I also know that there's some of you not saying yes. You're going, no, don't say that. No, it can't mean that. And and, and what I want to challenge all of us is please listen to, if you weren't here, but watch and listen to the entirety of the series. Because really, I'm having a four-hour conversation about worship. 
and you can get sideways for 10 minutes or one Sunday, and my advice is this, go above my head and tell my boss about it. God, all right? Talk to God about it. That's, that's, where our, that's where we wrestle with really most of the time. Is God, did you really say that? God, I'm really, I, that makes me uncomfortable. Now let me explain something last week. We talked about those two, two, two words. Well, halal, um, if you've been a, a believer for, for many years, you probably struggle with that one the most. It's like I'm supposed to do what? The Bible says to do what? And let me just say this, that my expression, my halal, my cheering, you know, uh, um, uh, celebrating on the verge of foolishness is going to look very different than my wife's halal. Why? Because we're different. Her level of foolishness is vastly different than my level of foolishness. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. That was not in the notes. But here, here's the deal. Both of our responsibilities, are we going to listen and obey God or not? It's not comparing each other. Again, that's our own hook, uh, um, trip up and, and hang ups. Is God, I need to hear from you. And then whatever God tells us to do, then are we going to obey God or not? So we talked about the enthusiasm of praise. Today we're going to talk two words of the heart of praise. The heart of praise. So the first uh, actually, the central point, if you're taking notes, is this. That God is worshipped by both gifts of praise and the praise of faith. God is worshipped, all right? When we respond, we're doing two things. We're giving God a gift of praise. I mean, that's, that's offering to God. A gift of praise, that's one Hebrew word we'll look at. And then we respond to God, this is the hard one, a praise of faith. A praise of faith. We'll unpack that as well. So let's look at the first Hebrew word. This is the third of seven. The Hebrew word is this. Zamar. Say zamar. zamar. Say it as Jewish as you can. Zamar. zamar. Okay, I don't know if it's Jewish or Italian. All right, I don't know. <laughs> it means to make music, to celebrate in song, and to touch the strings or parts of a musical instrument. We knew months ago that this was coming, and uh, we, we lined up all the string players. Can we thank God for them coming and helping us today? Some of them were a little nervous. Talked to them upstairs, and they're like, that was fun, you know, so they're helping us today. Th there's a lot in this word. Here's what God's saying. Make music, sing the music, and use instruments in music. Make music, vocally sing, use instruments. That's what the Hebrew word means. That's what the Hebrew word means. So let me give you, show you some verses here. It says, I will give thanks to you, Lord. Again, this is all directed as a gift to God, not to us, not to the neighbor. I give thanks to you, Lord, with all of my heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds, and I will be glad and rejoice in you. As a result, I will sing the zamar of your name. Almost high. Zamar. Another one is this. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. I will, again, response to that. I will sing the zamar of the name of the Lord most high. Another one is zamar the Lord with the harp. Newer translation, the electric guitar. Or the acoustic guitar. And make music to him on the ten-string lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. Here's another one. My heart, O oh God, keeps going back to the heart. My heart, O oh God, is steadfast, and I will sing. As a result, I will sing and make music. Awake my soul. And this is very fitting for the first service on Sunday mornings. Awake my soul, awake harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I mean, I, I'm going to let it fly. I'm going to let it go. Play it loud. I will zamar you, Lord, among the nations, and I will sing of you among the peoples. Then there's another one. 
Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with the cries of joy. Sing Zamar to God. Sing Zamar. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing to him a song of Zamar. Everything's going in God's direction. It's a gift. It's coming in the making music and, and using your voice and using instruments. All directed to the Lord, that is Zamar. Now, God knows that there is power in music. Music is powerful. It's been referred to as the key to the soul, down to the very core of who we are. Music has an impact. M music has an impact. Uh, repeat after me. What goes in my ears affects my heart. One more time. What goes in my ears affects my heart. There's power in music. That's why you need to be very careful of what music is going into your ears because it affects our hearts. Power in music is it, it can uplift us or it could depress us. Music can cause us to be angry or to be joyful. Music will harden our heart or soften our hearts. Music will discourage us or inspire us. There's power in music. One way we give a gift of praise, gift of worship to God, is we use music. And we sing. And there's instruments playing. You see, when Jesus was here, he gave us a commandment about worship. In John chapter 4, he says this. True worshipers, true responders of God will respond in the Father in the spirit and in truth. There's two things. Now, some of your Bible translation says spirit, small s, some say capital S. I, I chose capital S based upon the Greek word. There's two, it's a really interesting word, two meanings in the Greek that describes the meaning of this word. The first meaning is it's describing the Holy Spirit the third part of the triune God. And the second meaning is referring to our hearts, which triggers our emotions. That we are to respond to God in the spirit that the Holy Spirit is leading us, that affects our hearts, that triggers emotion. Emotions aren't bad, they could be bad, but it's all directed from the spirit to our heart, to emotions, have that in worship, respond there, and also respond in truth. Now, some people, they just, it's all emotion and very little truth. That's dangerous. That's strange. Even if a, there's a cool praise song, and you dig the beat, and you dig the rhythm, and you're like, woo, but the words say nothing. It's like cotton candy. There's no substance there. That, watch out for that. But there are also, there's many people who shut off emotion. I'm just not emotional, and I'm all about truth. That's great, but Jesus said both. Jesus said both. True worshipers, true responders will respond in the spirit, with their heart, and emotion, and truth. See, Satan is fully aware of the power of music, especially the power of praise music. A couple years ago, when my wife and I had a major scare of cancer with her, and we, we, it just rocked our world, and prayers and tears, and amazing how your priorities really get aligned really fast, and, and we were going to go to a conference in California, and the emergency, you know, a surgery needed to happen, and, and they, they said that they did, they were really aggressive and trying to remove the cancer, but we did not know if it had reached the lymph nodes, which you know, if it hits the lymph nodes, then it could go anywhere. And that was very traumatic. And we couldn't fly to the conference, so we drove to California. And all through this journey, we realized something. It was, it was one of those things that was always right, always right in front of your face, but you don't see it until you're forced to see it. The power of praise music. And one of the phrases that Candy kept saying over and over and over again is Satan is relentless. And attacking her with wrong thoughts, not truth, wrong thoughts. And thoughts of 
You won't see Kaylee graduate from high school. You won't be at Holly's wedding. Your husband will not have you. I mean, all those thoughts, they're normal, right? But they're, where do they come from? Not from God, so if it's not from God, where did it come from? And Satan was relentless, relentless, relentless. And what we found, my wife, my wife really experienced, was cranking up the praise music and singing along, vocally and joining with the instruments. Powerful. Powerful. In fact, my wife's whole worship experience changed because of it. But we're in California at this conference and went to bed. And uh, in the middle of the night, about 5, 5.15 in the morning, I'm awakened. It's a pitch dark room, but I'm waking because on the other side of the room on the couch, I hear my wife crying, trying not to wake me up. So I go over to her, honey, what, what's going on? And she goes, Satan is really relentless. I said, well, let's turn on the praise music. She goes, I don't want to wake up the other guests. I'm like, I don't care about them. <laughs> and we got our Bluetooth speakers hooked, you know, with my computer, and we started listening to some praise music. Some good old black gospel music that makes you move. <laughs> and we didn't wake them up. Well, I don't know if we did, but we turned it up, and we started singing with them. See, whenever you're attacked and you're under it with the enemy and all the lies coming at you. You need to pray to God, cry out to God in prayer, but many times we just silently pray. Or Satan cannot hear and read our minds, all right? He's not God. But he can hear what we're saying. But you add prayers, maybe sometimes praying through a song, and the song is playing and the instruments are going and you're singing every single time, including that late or early morning experience Satan when he hears the praise of God two things happen one he leaves he hates hearing God's name praised and two joy fills his void Satan leaves and joy comes in Satan leaves and joy comes in why there's power in praising God in song and singing it and have some instruments to help you there's it's zamar zamar David Whitehead, Whitehead wrote a great book that's helped me in the series called Holy Roar, and he says this, that praise music is more powerful than we even understand. And it can soften our hearts, it can soothe our troubled souls, and it opens the door to the spiritual world. It paves the road for the Spirit's coming. Praise music it's powerful. And God, that's one of the ways we are commanded to praise him. See, the prophet Elisha knew this. In, a, in 2 Kings 3, uh, the king of Israel, who was wicked, and another king with him said, okay, we're going to fight this battle, and, and, and anything they tried wasn't working. And someone said, hey, there's this prophet. And the king of Israel said, hey, let's get the prophet of God. We need to hear from the Lord. And Elisha shows up, and he says, why would you call me? You never listened to me anyways. But I'm only coming because of the king of Israel. And they said, Tell, give us the word from the Lord. And Elisha didn't. Then, you know what he said? Bring the harpist. I want music playing. They called some harpists and they began to play. And everybody's looking at him and he's just praying. And while the music is going, God spoke to Elisha. And he said, this is what God says. There's power with prayer. It opens up our, the spiritual world. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, King Jehoshaphat was a king that, that loved God, one of the rare kings. And, and they didn't have, you know, radar. They didn't have scouts, you know, you know, from faraway lands. And he was told there's two different armies around the bend by the, by the Red Sea. They're going to be here later on today or even tomorrow, and they're ready to attack us. And a, a Jehovah went right to God and knelt and, and prayed and said, God, you know what's happening. This is too big for me. I don't know what to do. What do we do? God said two things. One, first of all, he said, I will fight for you. But two things, get the music playing and start singing praises to my name. I mean, that is the most creative war plan strategy that I've ever heard. 
and they sent out the musicians and people by, the, by hundreds and hundreds went there and they began to sing with the instruments, praise to God. They were zamaring. And God supernaturally defeated both, both enemies. There's power with praise music. So with that, I'll give you a pastoral challenge. You limit your worship experience when you really only watch the online message. I understand sometimes with your work, you can't be here, you're sick. But those mornings, you're like, oh, I'm too tired. You know what? I won't go. I'll just watch it online. Let me challenge you to fight through that and get your body here. Because usually that's where God wants to meet you. And he wants to use music to draw you. All right? So there's a, co- there's a powerful ch- combination So the second challenge is you limit your worship experience when on a consistent basis you show up late for a service. All the musicians are like, thank you, Barry. But I'm not thanking for them. It's for you. There's something powerful when you hear the praise and the music and the singing and the instruments praising God and point everything to you, God, everything to you. Then you combine that with the teaching of God's word. It's a powerful worship experience. Powerful worship experience. So get here on time. In fact, a little early. So you're ready to go. See, God, the heart of praise is I'm going to worship God with a gift of praise. I want to thank all of you who play an instrument. You help us. You help us. Absolutely. And some of you, the only reason why you're playing is because you had mean parents who made you take those music lessons. <laughs> oh, that teacher, oh, I can't believe it. I had to practice, practice, practice. See, God, you had no idea that God was preparing you to help lead people to worship in him. Now, how many of you, by the way, how many of you play an instrument? Can I see, not, I'm not saying you play really good, but how many of you play an instrument? Can I see your hands were high? Okay, good, 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 all right. Actually, all of us should have raised our hands. Because we, God equipped us with a percussion instrument. Our hands, our hands are percussion instrument. I mean, we do it in the car. Bam! Okay, worship God. Now some people go, how come after a song? How come after a song people applaud? Well, you know what the meaning of applaud is? It means praise. It means praise. That's what the word means. And when I'm here as one part of worship, and a song is good. I'll, I'll clap during the song. I'm like, yes. But then when it's done, my response, I'm not thanking the musicians. I mean, I'm glad they're here, but I'm going, yes, God, yes. That, those words are true. Yes, I believe those words. That's everything directing, yes, God. And even, you know, even when the message is being preached, if if God moves, you're like, yes, yes, it's okay to applaud. You're not applauding me. It's the truth that was just spoken. Spirit, listening to the spirit and truth, true worship, true response to God. So worship from our heart is, God, here's a gift of praise. And all those verses, all about you, God, it's to you, to you, to you, to you, for what you've done, who you are. The second Hebrew word is this, tauda. Say tauda. Tauda. That means the extension of the hand. It's thanksgiving for things not yet received. It's a confession from our heart to God, what's going on. A sacrifice of praise. And it's a choir of worshipers. Tauda. Now, the extension of the hand is different than yada, okay? Close, but it's different. Yada is like throwing a stone. What I've, in studying, I've heard two pictures that people have, different people have described for the extension of hand given the rest of the meaning. The picture is like a little child lifting up his hands waiting to be picked up by mom or dad. They're waiting, right? You ever seen your kid do that to you and you're walking across the room and they're, they're following you? Like this. They're like, pick me up, pick me up. Maybe they're crying. Maybe they're sad. Maybe they have a boo-boo. But they're looking to you. Pick me up, pick me up. Put that in your mind. But here's the key to this, right in the heart of this. It's thanking God, 
praising God for things not yet received. That's why it's referred to as the praise of faith. This word is referred to as the praise of faith. I'm waiting for you, God, but I am thanking you and I'm praising you for things not yet received. This is a sacrifice of praise. This is a sacrifice of praise. Um, it, it's thanking God for what he will do. It's thanking God and praising God for the promises that one day he will keep. It is not, it is not, which so many other praise words are thanking God for what he has done. It's not for what he has done. It's praising God, thanking God for what he will do. It's called the prayer of expectation. It's a praise of faith. It's a praise of faith. Here's a couple of uh, uh, passages. It says, whoever offers tauda, God says, you glorify me. And to him who orders his contact or lines up his conduct aright, I will show you the salvation of God. Another verse is this. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. This, this is the challenge. It's a grateful tell thou. I am grateful for the answer that is not here yet. I am grateful for the situation I'm in that I'm looking to you by faith. I'm grateful for prayers that have not yet been fulfilled. That's powerful. That's why God says that you glorify me when you tau tau me. He goes, make music, zamar, to our, I mean, to our God on the harp. Now, the best picture of this is, is David. David was promised by God, probably about 14 years old, that one day you'll be king of Israel. He anointed him as the next king. And weeks went by, years went by, decades went by, and Saul is still king. And Saul is still apathetic toward God. And Saul is still jealous of David. And Saul is still chasing David. Saul still wants David to die. And David is by now, I mean, I mean year after year after year, like, God, when? When am I going to be king? He had several opportunities to take Saul out. And he goes, no, 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 that's the Lord's anointed. God's going to do it. I can't force it. But a, a picture of his absolute desperation. He, he finds himself after being pursued and cornered, and he's so desperate, he hides in the craziest of, of places. He hides in Gath, the hometown of Goliath. I mean, you have to be desperate to go to the hometown of the giant you killed. And word gets out that, guess who's here? Are you kidding? D D David is here? And it's like the, you know, the buzzards are flying around, around, right around, and word gets to the king, like, hey, David's here, let's take him out. He killed our hero, Goliath. I mean, he's right here. And David, in Gath, writes Psalm 56. And with that, he says this, God, in God, I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. This is, this is amazing. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? What the, can the king of Gath do to me? What can the evil people in Gath do to me? Nothing. He says, vows made to you are binding upon me, O oh God. Meaning, I made a vow as a teenager to trust in you, God, and I'm not breaking my vow. That's powerful. I made a vow. I'm going to trust you even in the hard times. He says, I will render Talda to you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to thank you for my deliverance that is not here today. Because I trusted you. I made a vow to trust in you. It's easy to trust God in the light. It's hard to trust God in the dark. David's life was at stake. And in that circumstance he said I'm going to tell down you I'm going to praise you with expectation and faith that you know what I'm going to praise you because you will deliver me somehow some way not for what you've done in the past that's a different praise I'm going to praise you for what is yet to come and I'm like a little boy saying Any, anytime God anytime you can pick me up like today would be a really good day 
but I'm going to praise you. I'm going to thank you. A man named Ken uh, told his friend, he said, you know, last night my daughter went to a party. She left early, didn't come home, and no one knows where she is. And Ken's friend goes, oh, my goodness, you must be worried out of your mind. And Ken said this, I do not worry, I worship. That's the essence of ta Tadao. I'm not going to worry because I know who I'm trusting in. I don't worry, I worship. So maybe some of you are in a situation where you've been praying and praying and praying and the, the, the answer has not yet come. And you're going to choose to praise God and thank Him anyways. Maybe you've been crying out to God, God, heal my marriage. And you've been on your knees praying. You've been t- crying and saying, God, please, please rescue our marriage. The essence of Tao Dao is I'm going to praise you even though you haven't fixed it yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to praise you, God, in advance for what you're going to do to my wayward son or daughter or grandchild. They have wandered so far from you, and they're into stuff I never thought they would be into, but I, by faith, as an extension of my hands, I'm going to say, God, I'm going to praise you in advance for what you will do one day. I don't know what my future is financially. It does not look good. I just got this health report back, and it scares me to to no end. I'm going to keep praying, but I'm going to keep praising. God, I'm praising you in advance. I'm thanking you in advance for delivering me. That's the essence of this kind of praise. We're singing the third rendition of an old hymn called It Is Well. And here's part of this song. It's a ta-da, ta-da. And through it all, what I'm going through, through it all, through it all, here's the key, my eyes are on you. And through it all, through it all, it is well. It's a choice. Because the situation, it's not well. My finances, it's not well. My marriage, it's not well. But you know what? I'm going to praise God because my eyes are on you. And it's a choice to praise and worship God. It's a sacrifice of praise. That's what this word means. Because there's times when even... The song and the gathering, this and that is halal and celebration. You're like, that's not where I'm at today. Today is not the day. The moment's not the moment to celebrate and dance. But I'm going to still praise God for what I have yet to receive. Because I made a vow to trust in Him. And I'm not breaking my vow. So we can unleash God with enthusiasm. But we also... Unleash worship to a worthy God with music. Now Satan will leave and joy will come. Even in our darkest moments. The Bible says, when you do that, when you offer me this kind of praise, you're glorifying me. Wow. Powerful. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I don't know where you're at, but God knows exactly what's going on in your life. Some of you are today like, you know what? I need to to express worship in music and with the instruments. I just got to brag on God. God, you are worthy. But maybe you're here today and your heart's heavy. Because things around you on the surface is not well. Maybe you need to hear from God today and say, you know what? In the midst of it, praise me. Even though you have not seen my answer yet, praise me. When you do, you glorify your heavenly Father. So Lord, we, before we transition to, to sing a song to you, and 
hear the cry of our hearts. Maybe some of us need to lift our hands like a little child. Say, God, um, can you pick me up? Can you carry me for a little bit? But regardless of when you do that, I'm going to worship you and glorify you. Lord, may you be pleased by both forms of worship we learned today. Because you are worthy. We pray this in the name of Jesus and all the power associated with his name. Amen. Let's stand and express our worship to God.